Let me give you the update on UK involvement with the Horizon 2020 science programme. Now, the science minister, Joe Johnson, as well as the science commissioner um, of the European Commission, uh, Carlos Moidash, have both given reassurances that it's business as usual at the moment. And yet at the same time, we've got lots of examples in the press and also on our database of concern amongst UK scientists um, about applying for grants or forming consortia and concern from um, our partners on the continent about including UK partners. And these concerns come down to two things mainly. One is timing and two is discrimination. So in terms of the timing, the core concern is that if you're starting to form consortia now, by the time you apply or by the time it's evaluated, is the UK going to be out of the EU science program? And in terms of discrimination, the concern is that um, our UK uh, scientists being discriminated against now in terms of uh, consortia formation, or will their submissions be discriminated against by evaluators? whether consciously or subconsciously, whether it's the UK leading or UK just being a partner. So to deal with the timing concern first, um, nothing changes at the moment. Um, nothing changes until Article 50 is invoked, which will be probably about six months down the line. But even then, we're entering a two-year period of renegotiation. So that means nothing will be changing then either. It's all discussing what the changes will be at the end of that. So we've got a good two and a half years at least of guaranteed stability after which there may not be um, a problem either. So bear that in mind that timing wise for applications or for forming consortia it is all fine. Now in terms of um, discrimination be aware that there is a, a hotline that has been set up by the science minister so that you can report discrimination. Uh, so you can report it there or you can discuss it with us. Uh, we've collected a few cases on the monitoring form. All of this needs to be handled sensitively, but it is being looked into seriously. And I am very, very sure that also in terms of evaluations happening, um, there will be a lot of examination, a lot of scrutiny on that. So we do have rolling data on who submits and what the success rates are. So that will be looked at closely because currently we're taking in about um, a billion euros per annum into UK science from the EU. So even a few percentage points, uh, disruption and discrimination obviously translates into many millions. So you should be reassured and you should reassure all of your European collaborators that the whole framework is stable and guaranteed for many years and even when there is disruption anything put into the system I am sure will be covered at that stage and secondly it's not a problem having UK partners on board because everything is going to be monitored tightly to make sure there isn't discrimination so that's all fine one thing we can't do much about at the moment is the hit to the British brand in as, as a country and in science. Um, and so that is going to make people rethink. So if we're talking about the ERC grants or the Erasmus Plus programme or Marie Curie grants, those people who'd have naturally wanted to come to the UK on those grants may well be thinking twice after seeing um, a climate of, of xenophobia, some anti-intellectual rhetoric and also um, an unsure funding uh, landscape moving forward. So it has somewhat taken the shine off the attractiveness of the UK and even similarly for consortia uh, forming people might not view Oxford and Cambridge and UCL and Imperial as the natural leaders that they did before when the UK was actually sitting on top of the EU science program guiding its policy a lot with its you know science minister there and MEPs you know we've moved somewhat to the fringe so there might be a change in perceptions about who should be leading consortium things like that and there's very little you can do about that except to rebuild the British brand in science and that means that we are going to need to petition our, our politicians 
to have that big money there for investment so we still look like an exciting place to be and we need to make sure that we are very clearly open for business and open for talent to be coming here and working here with full rights so that's a big challenge that we need to undertake